Yang Xin, who took the initiative, realized that something was wrong after dealing with several soldiers. The once crowded military camp during the day was now empty, and he understood that everyone had fallen into a trap. Meanwhile, the crown prince, escorted by Mu Yang, had already entered Zhou Hakjo's residence. In his irrational state, he failed to notice the sparsely guarded surroundings as he rushed towards the room. However, as soon as he entered the room, the door was closed behind him, and a figure approached him. A zombie broke through the door and charged at the crown prince, revealing itself to be none other than his own father, the king. It turned out that it was all part of Zhou Hakjo's scheme. He had long planted his loyal followers around Li Chang, gathering information about his every move. Upon learning about Li Chang's plan to launch a night raid on the military camp, Zhou Hakjo had orchestrated this grand deception in advance. The crown prince couldn't bring himself to kill his own father, and he desperately tried to escape from the room, but it was already locked. Zhou Hakjo stood outside the door, his plan flawlessly executed. If Li Chang killed his own father, he would forever bear the guilt of regicide and be unable to inherit the throne. But if he didn't kill, he would meet his demise here. No matter who died, Zhou Hakjo would be the one to benefit in the end. As Li Chang struggled to break free inside the room, he had a fleeting vision of his father approaching him. He recalled his father's words when he was a child, urging him to live on as a strong and brave man. At that moment, on high and arrived just in time, Zhou Hakjo, using the king's name as a pretext, claimed that the king himself would personally deal with the rebellious crown prince, forbidding anyone from entering. However, on Haiyan knew that it was all part of Zhou Hakjo's scheme and walked straight towards the room. Zhou Hakjo ordered his men to shoot on Haiyan, but everyone hesitated due to their fear and admiration for on Haiyan's past military achievements. Enraged, Zhou Hakjo personally struck down the leader who hesitated. Only then did the others gather the courage to open fire. On Haiyan, using his last ounce of strength, managed to unlock the door. Inside, the crown prince had already beheaded the king. He crawled towards the crown prince whispered a final message about an escape route, and then died. Zhou Hakjo then began his performance, pretending to be heartbroken. He wrapped the king's head in a red cloth and, in front of many soldiers, accused the crown prince of killing the king. Helpless, the crown prince was unable to refute the accusations. The elite squad led by the crown prince, along with the crown prince himself, were all captured in plain sight. At this moment, inside the Hanyang Palace, the magistrate led a group of people to search the queen's private residence. However, the queen had already received the news in advance, and six sedan chairs were carried out of the courtyard. The passing magistrate didn't pay attention and proceeded to search the queen's residence. After searching around, they found no pregnant women but discovered bloodstains under the carpet. It was then that the magistrate remembered the large boxes that had been carried out earlier and immediately rushed after them with his men. However, they only found three of the boxes, and upon opening them, they discovered the bodies of murdered women and children. From the evidence, it appeared that the women had been stabbed after giving birth, and the children had been strangled. Furthermore, all the children were girls. The magistrate speculated that the person behind this must be in need of a male child. But before he could fully understand the situation, he received the news of the emperor's death, and the entire nation was filled with grief. Zhou Hak Zhou. In the meantime, hastily wrote down the crown prince's crimes and prepared to bring the crown prince and others back to Hanyang for questioning and execution. Inside the Hanyang palace, after the king's death, numerous ministers gathered to discuss the succession to the throne. However, with the crown prince proven guilty of killing the king, he could no longer inherit the throne. Some ministers supported the child born to the queen as the future successor to the country, while others supported the descendants of the emperor's younger brother, the Duke of Lu. To ascend the throne, the debates grew heated, and ultimately, they decided to determine the succession based on whether the child born to the queen was a boy or a girl. At this moment, Unix brought news that the queen was experiencing labor pains and about to give birth. However, the one giving birth in the queen's chamber was not the queen herself but a woman living next to her. It turned out that the queen had anticipated the magistrate's search and had the woman taken away after they finished searching the chamber. However, the series of murders of women raised suspicions among the officials, and the chief inspector secretly approached the magistrate, hoping he would continue investigating the matter. But they needed to find clues before the queen gave birth. On the other hand, the crown prince, imprisoned and haunted by the shadow of killing his own father, couldn't escape his guilt. Siobai took the opportunity to bring him food and check on him. The crown prince used water to write crucial information on the ground and asked Siobai to help him with a task, to which she nodded in agreement. Meanwhile, 
The people in prison in the jail also realized that there must be a traitor who had leaked their plans. Resulting in the premature knowledge of their actions, they couldn't sit idly by. As once they were taken to Hanyang, everyone would face execution. Yangshan expressed that his marksmanship was accurate and that he could find an opportunity to escape and kill Zhou Hak Zhou. The others agreed with his plan. Later, Yangshan took out a small knife from his sleeve and cut the ropes while the soldiers were preparing to escort them back to Hanyang. When the moment came, they overpowered several soldiers together and rushed out. Yangshan obtained the hunting rifle he desired and headed straight for Zhou Hak Zhou. Zhou Hak Zhou ordered to execute all the escaped criminals on the spot. Yangshin loaded his gun, aimed at Zhou Hak Zhou, and pulled the trigger. The gunshot echoed throughout the camp. Zhou Hak Zhou stood there, covered in blood, although Yangshin thought he hit him. Fortunately, a nearby soldier took the bullet instead. This shot terrified Zhou Hak Zhou, realizing he narrowly escaped death. Yangshin, who missed his chance, was captured again by Zhou Hak Zhou's men. The crown prince was also brought out. And at that moment, another unexpected event occurred. Zombies seemed to attack from a distance. A zombie, with military flags impaled on its body, walked towards them it was on Hyan, who had died. Everyone was stunned, except for the crown prince, who seemed to have known in advance. So what was happening? Why did on Hyan, who died from a gunshot, turn into a zombie? It turned out that before his death, on Hyan had told the crown prince that he wanted to become a zombie. Only by reappearing in front of the entire army could he prove that the crown prince didn't kill the king and expose Zhou Hakjo's conspiracy. It was the last thing he could do for the crown prince. Meanwhile, the crown prince had left a message for Seo Bai on the floor of the prison cell, asking her to use resurrection plan to help revive on Hyan. The zombified on Hyan, smelling the blood on Zhou Hakjo, charged at him without hesitation. Zhou Hakjo ordered his men to aim for the head. But the arrow shot by the archers didn't hit any headshots. In the end, on Hyan bit off a piece of flesh from Zhou Hak Zhou's face. It was the crown prince who finally stepped in and beheaded his former mentor, putting an end to the chaos. The events unfolded too quickly for anyone to react. The crown prince declared in front of everyone that these monsters could only be stopped by severing their heads. Then, Seobai explained the role of the resurrection plant and revealed the fact that the king had already passed away. All of this was part of Zhou Hakjo's conspiracy to seize the throne. The entire imperial army witnessed these events and pledged their loyalty to the crown prince. Their immediate task was to rescue the people trapped in Sangju city and deliver food to them. With the crown prince leading the way, the army engaged in a war against the zombies. They used artillery fire to clear a path for the food supply convoy. They also used kites to determine the position of the convoy and attack the zombies approaching the convoy. Meanwhile, the people inside the city noticed the food supply convoy approaching and provided timely assistance. Fortunately, the food reached Sangju city without any major incidents, and the temporary crisis of the people was resolved. On the other hand, Seo Bai, unable to see someone die without offering help, assisted in treating Jo Hak Jo's wounds. Cho Biam Pal cautiously approached Seo Bai and asked if Jo Hak Jo would soon turn into a zombie. Seo Bai replied that it was uncertain because Jo Hak Jo was directly bitten by An Hyun, who had consumed the resurrection plant. It should be similar to the case of the assistant getting bitten by the king, which only resulted in a coma and slow death without any contagious effects. The contagious zombies were created when they consumed the decaying flesh of the assistant. Although Jo Hak Jo did not have contagious properties, his symptoms were extremely dangerous. His body had started to turn cold, and he had even lost consciousness. Cho Biam Pal pleaded with Seo Bai to save his uncle, although Seo Bai was reluctant. She also saw this as an opportunity to study the properties of the resurrection plant. She needed to find some herbs to control Jo Hak Jo's condition. At that moment, Cho Biam Pal remembered the medicinal herbs he had brought from Dongni. These herbs were very precious and were originally meant for the queen, as she frequently consumed them. Seo Bai took the herbs from his hand and discovered that they were mugwort. However, mugwort was a herb used to alleviate postpartum depression in women and had no effect on Jo Hak Jo's symptoms. This puzzled her because the queen was already pregnant. So why would she consume such herbs? Just then, the door to the room was opened, and a guard named Mu Young entered. It turned out that he was a spy who had been hiding by Li Chang's side. Taking advantage of the crown prince's absence from the camp, he used the crown prince's name to take Seo Bai, Jo Hak Jo, and the others away. When the crown prince returned from his inspection, he found that everyone had disappeared. Consumed by anger and betrayal from his closest ally, he was furious. In truth, he had known from the beginning that Mu Young was a spy, but due to their long-standing relationship, he couldn't bring himself to eliminate him. But now, because of his soft-heartedness, 
the situation was becoming increasingly dire. If Mu Young were to bring Zhou Hakjo back to Hanseong, the Central Army would undoubtedly launch another attack, plunging the country back into war. Without much time to think, he immediately led Yan Shin and others in pursuit. Mu Young was forced to act the way he did out of desperation. His wife had been taken by Zhou Hakjo's son and was now being held captive with other pregnant women in the queen's custody. If he didn't follow the orders of the Zhao family, his wife and unborn child would be killed. In the prison in Hanseong, the magistrate was interrogating the queen's palace maid, trying to extract information about the pregnant women. However, the palace maid was loyal to the queen and refused to utter a word, no matter how much torture was inflicted upon her. Meanwhile, a report came in that some witnesses had seen six sedan chairs being carried out from the palace last night, but only three sedan chairs were found. The other three sedan chairs were believed to be in the queen's palace. Without hesitation, they searched the queen's sleeping quarters and found the three sedan chairs. The palace maid tried to explain that they were used by the wet nurses attending to the queen's delivery the previous night, but the magistrate refused to believe her. When he ordered her to open the room's door, they discovered three actual wet nurses inside. It was then that he realized he had fallen into the queen's trap, and he himself was arrested for trespassing into the queen's chambers. With the magistrate captured, the guards who were watching over the queen were also recalled. The queen's plan was reaching its final stages. On the other side, Seo Bai and the others, rushing to catch up, noticed that Zhou Hakjo's condition was worsening rapidly. If they didn't treat him soon, he might die before they reached Hanseong. So, after discussing with Mu Young, they found a temporary refuge in an abandoned room to rest. When Zhou Hakjo regained consciousness, he quietly said something to Cho Biam Pal, which caught Seo Bai's attention. She also sensed that something was off about Mu Young, suspecting that he was acting behind the Crown Prince's back. She told Mu Young that they needed to return to the Crown Prince immediately because she had something important to tell him. However, Mu Young ignored her pleas, left with no choice. Seo Bai shared her suspicions with Mu Young and showed him the medicinal herbs given by Cho Biam Pal. She revealed that the queen had been consuming these herbs, which were used to treat postpartum depression a big taboo for pregnant women. Seo Bai explained that the queen was either not pregnant or had already miscarried. Upon hearing this, Mu Young recalled seeing numerous pregnant women in the annex when he took his wife to the queen's chambers. He wondered what exactly the queen was plotting. He couldn't help but start worrying about his wife's safety. 